I always thought that the corresponding author on a research paper is just the one that communicates with the journal, the one that's responsible for coordinating the admin. Never did I know that there's actually a formal description of the role of a corresponding author. Open in front of me is a lovely article by McNutt et al. on the transparency in authors' contributions and responsibilities to promote integrity in scientific publication. And I'll leave a link to this resource in the description box below this video. Appropriate roles for corresponding authors are as follows. Ensuring that all listed authors have approved the manuscript before submission and that all authors receive the submission and all substantive correspondence with editors, as well as the full reviews, verifying that all data materials, including reagents and code, even those developed and provided by other authors, comply with the transparency and reproducibility standards of both the field and the journal. This responsibility includes, but is not limited to, ensuring that the original data materials or code upon which the submission is based are preserved following best practices in the field so that they are retrievable for reanalysis. Confirming that data materials and code presentation accurately reflects the original and foreseeing and minimizing obstacles to the sharing of data materials and code described in the work. The corresponding author should be responsible for managing these requirements across the author group and ensuring that the entire author group is fully aware of and in compliance with the best practices in the discipline of publication. Another responsibility of the corresponding author is to discourage ghost authorship. Corresponding authors must reveal as appropriate whether the manuscript benefited from the use of editorial services that, if unacknowledged, might constitute an undisclosed conflict of interest. Examples include the use of an editor from an organization that may have a vested interest in slanting the result or reliance on a technical writer at a level that would warrant authorship credit. These situations might very variously be addressed by including a statement in the acknowledgments, by describing the efforts in the methods, or by adding an author. Many journals require corresponding authors to indicate whether any authors on earlier versions have been removed or new authors added and why. This simple step discourages the practice of guest authors or orphan authors. It is incumbent on the corresponding author to ensure that all authors or group laboratory leaders in large collaborations have certified the author list and contribution description that all authors who deserve to be credited on the manuscript are indeed identified and that no authors are listed who do not deserve authorship credit and that author contributions where they are provided are expressed accurately. And I must say, it's quite a responsibility to be a corresponding author. Now, the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors website and the specific web page on defining the role of authors and contributors also describe the role of the corresponding author. The corresponding author is one individual who takes primary responsibility for communication with a journal during the manuscript submission, peer review and publication process. The corresponding author typically ensures that the journal's administrative requirements, such as providing details of authorship, ethics committee approval, clinical trial registration, documentation, and disclosures of relationships and activities are properly completed and reported, although these duties may be delegated to one or more co-authors. The corresponding author should be available throughout the submission and peer review process to process to respond to editorial queries in a timely way and should be available after publication to respond to critiques of the work and cooperate with any requests from the journal for additional data or additional information should questions about the paper arise after publication. Now, I hope this video helped. Now that we know what the responsibilities are of the corresponding author, it's also easier to meet these expectations. But do go and have a look at the two links, which I'll put in the description box below this video. And feel free to leave a comment below this video. Any issues that you had as corresponding author? Well, what are you, your thoughts? around being a corresponding author. Enjoy. If you found this video helpful, smash the like button. For more useful tips to boost your research experience, subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button below this video. 
and while you're at it, hit the bell so that you get notified whenever I produce a new video. If you need a solution to a challenge not yet covered on my channel, leave a comment in the box below. See you in the next video.